Big news guys, we got not one, but two brand new plugins from Softube. And these are original design, a clipper and a widener. And they are pretty awesome. You hear them first here, of course, on Mixbus TV. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to Miss Best TV. Hope you guys are having a great day. Before we start, check the info box down below for free plugins, special discounts and offers, and of course, links to the clipper and widener from Softube. If you haven't already, go check out the new website, mixbestv.com. In there, you will find all the mix and mastering courses available, start to finish on many different genres. On the website, you can also book all the other services, mixing, mastering, private lesson, mix consultations, and a lot more. If you wanna access the exclusive videos here on YouTube, Click the join button down here, become a Mixbus TV member. And if the videos are helping you, please consider using the super thanks or grab some merch, support the channel. Let's get to the video. It's always a great day when Softube releases a new plugin and these two are now analog emulation of classic units. These are original design. We have a long overdue, I wanna say, <laughs> clipper, cause I've always wanted a clipper from Softube and a widener, which is freaking awesome that's why i'm starting this video with this one but let me show you both the gui on top we have the clipper at the bottom we have the widener they both share the same style for the gui this gray and black and green there's no 3d graphic no analog knobs they are slick extremely clear to read both of them are resizable and for both plugin we have the hidden controls for headroom input and output here on the sides but let's start with the widener not because it's my favorite i I love all my plugins equally because this thing it's pretty insane it sounds awesome it has a ton of possibilities and different options for manipulating your stereo field so don't look at the widener just as a widener it has many tricks up its sleeve for both enhancing stereo material and also for stereoizing mono signal and it's quite unique in its controls and sound in the widening section we have five different algorithm classic frequency spread rotation ambience and reflection for each one you can see we have different control changing on the right panel below that we have the output section with a slider for the overall width goes from 0 to 300 a mono bass slider that defaults on off position and it can be turned up to 2000 hertz and then our output level you will find that out of the five widening options some of them are meant to enhance and manipulate material that is stereo to begin with and others work best on mono material but for sound design there's no rules this thing allows you to do some pretty cool tricks for stereo imaging and depth and also it approaches stereo manipulation and widening differently from i want to say pretty much any other widener out there and that's one of the reasons i like this so much if we select the classic widening we have a slide for amount a slide for size a slide for low frequency and high frequency of course the two filters will limit the bandwidth to which the effect is applied for example if we don't want to widen the low frequencies we are going to bring the low frequency slider up to whatever frequency we want to leave out of the effect so 100 hertz 80 hertz whatever you want same for the high frequency for the frequency spread mode we have again an amount and a flip side on and off with our filter still then we have the rotation for which we have the amount the emphasis and again the flip side switch on and off this one is great for sound design to create sounds that are out of the speakers ear candies very cool effect then we have the different approach the ambient approach to widening and creating depth and space the ambience algorithm has an amount a size low frequency and high frequency again and same for the reflections but let's start playing some audio we'll start with classic Okay, this already sounds very different from many wideners to me. And I also happen to have a couple, actually three 
hardware wideners, one on the Fusion, one on the Drummer Multiband, one for the spacecraft, and countless plugins. And this one offers something different with the size you can hear that the widening is not just a simple boost on the sides. There's more happening under the hood and you have more control on how wide and what kind of perception of the stereo field you have combining the size and the amount. This is our goodbye, my love. This is last sunrise, my love. This is my style of us, love. Okay, you hear the bigger the size, the more spacious the track gets, there's more information brought up. And of course, my suggestion is the bigger the size, the lower the amount, because of course the effects is more noticeable. And if you overdo it, of course, you're gonna lose the mid-channel and the focus and the power. Let's try the frequency spread. I'm sick of this game. I'm sick. Let me, let me hate. Let me go the crazy train. I'm sick of your face, I'm sick of heartache All right, you can hear it does very weird things because it spreads uh, different frequencies in the sound stage. So this one is definitely not something you want to use on a full mix. I'm actually going to try it on a synth. Very cool. If you use this on background vocals or uh, layers of synths, when you have a stack and you start moving frequencies left or right, you can create a massive wall of sound and position elements in the stereo field in a much different way than you could do with reverb or simple panning. Let's try rotation. I'm gonna go back to a mix simply because it's easier to hear the effect. Love, I'm sick of this game. I'm sick, let me, let me hate. Okay, so you hear this one can be used for over the top effect, especially when you flip the side and you up the amount you create out of the speaker sounds. And then we have ambience and reflection. Let's go ambience. All 
right? This one used conservatively can be used on a mix. It can actually rescue some of those mixes. I did a couple of mastering with this one and I wanna stress this, a little goes a long way, but those really flat mixes and really dry mixes, which today it's kind of common in certain genres, this algorithm can add space without actually sounding wet. That's the selling point for this algorithm. And I think it works great. The next one is reflection is kind of a variation of the same theme. This is what really gives us just the first reflection points. So it still emulate and create somewhat a real space. You can also pay attention to the vector here, which is very telling. And it's a very good visual aid for how much energy you're adding. And this goes for the classic as well, ambience and reflection. Let's hear it. Okay, I try to give you a comparison, direct comparison between ambience and reflections. There's a little more air moving with the ambience. It's a little more claustrophobic with the reflections, especially if you go, let's say over 40%, 30%, these two are, if you're using it on a mix to be used, probably not more than 10, 15%. While on single tracks and for sound design, you can use this as you would for an ambient reverb or for early reflections. I'm actually gonna try it really quick on a drum. Okay, so very subtle, it can add a little bit of depth to flat and really dry loops like this. Let's try reflection on this instead. Okay, one thing to notice if you're gonna use these two on material that has low end content, like in this case, you hear how using the ambience algorithm kind of smear the kick drum a little bit, even though I have the low frequency filter while the reflection, it keeps it focused. It's not better or worse, just pointing out some differences. Let's try the other modes really quick. A lot of options, a lot of different subtleties that will allow you to really position elements in your stereo field when you start using it on groups and single tracks.
this is exactly what I was talking about at the beginning, the frequency spread on some more mono or mono signals can really stereoize them and place them in the sound stage in a way that, to be completely honest, I can't think of any other plugin that can do this, at least this easily. Ambience for the piano. This is also great for vocals, the ambience and reflection, like mono vocals, if you give it, if you want to give it a little bit of space, that's definitely something you can try. Let's take a look at the clipper now. Here's our clipper interface. As we said, the resizable, you can, if you want, hide the input and output tabs. I'm going to keep them open. We also have a headroom down there. And here's our controls. They are all in slider form. We have an input gain. We have a headroom control. This is very important, so get familiar with it. We have an analog color directly related and linked to the headroom for the color and sound. We have filters, low frequency and high frequency. These limit the bandwidth where the analog color is applied. So when you use the low frequency, the low cut, the analog color will not, in this case, saturate anything below 160. And same for the high frequency and above. Then we have the ceiling. This is our threshold for the actual clipping. Then we have our knee control that goes from hard to soft. You can also see there in the visualizer, the white line gets thicker. And then we have another sets of filters now this is very important because I don't think there's any other clipper that gives this option these filter bandpass the actual audio that is gonna be clipped this is important to notice because if you're gonna use the clipper as a form of peak control right I thought this in many other videos we can use clipping instead of limiting to control peaks and not have any signal pass a certain threshold when you engage the filters there will be overs okay so the clipper will not work so to speak as a limiter anymore it will clip and saturate a certain frequency band but it will not work as a brick wall anymore then we have a dry wet slider an output gain and here on the side we have four settings which you can copy b to c and to d just to quickly compare different settings this is how i look at the soft tube i think this is where it excels it's more into adding a really nice analog color and a really musical type of saturation even if you don't use the analog color at all the type of clipping is kind of very round and mellow as opposed to other clippers that are more loudness oriented and so the type of saturation is better used on kick and snare not that you cannot use this on kick and snare but what i'm saying is even for longer audio event this is a nice color box as opposed to a transparent let's try to be as loud as possible type of clipper with that said let's run some drum with it This should be enough of an example for you to understand what I meant. It's kind of warm and it adds density right away as opposed to be, let's say, completely transparent or borderline completely transparent and just taking care of the nominal level. It actually enriches the material, especially the kick drum. The kind of saturation it adds, it's extremely musical to me. And I did not touch the analog color at all yet. And you saw we have a visual representation for the waveform and the amount of clipping that we are doing. Now I'm gonna exaggerate the settings so you can really hear the character and start playing with a soft knee and filters.
very interesting, right? So I don't think there's any other uh, clipper that can do this. We can actually take out from the clipping circuit certain frequencies, especially the low end is usually when we clip a lot, the first range that kind of breaks and fold many times in a non-musical way. It's funny though, because I kind of like the way the, this one breaks. It's got this soft clipping, even when the knee is hard, it still have a very round breaking point. And I particularly like for that fuzzy kind of sound, you saw me using the dry wet. I would not use it to substitute other clippers that have another function for me in, in a mix. I will use this more as a color box. And I want to say it does add even though it's funny because it's not an analog emulation of a, an existing piece of gear, it does add an analog vibe when you're using it in that way. Let's go back and start adding add the analog color to it. Okay, so you hear very dense, very thick, and the analog color is kind of dark. It doesn't add sparkle or shiny top end. It's more focused on the muscle, like 100, 120, 90 hertz. You hear in this case how useful the filters on the analog color turn out to be. The low end got overcooked very quickly. In this case, I can just take the low end out from the analog color and then decide different frequencies for what I wanna clip and what I wanna color. It's nice, it's really nice to add some type of analog flavor to it. It doesn't fool you with level, with the set button, you're always right on the money when comparing with and without and bypassing. All you hear is just how it subtly changes the tone and controls the peak. I like it because it is really different from all the other clippers out there. And now Soft will probably hate me, I wanna try it on a straight 808. And actually I'm gonna combine the widener with this, because that's a mono sound.
Well, that was interesting. It was also from the harder test with just a sine wave right there. But that's also one way uh, where you can experiment with the analog color and the clipping. And you hear how the harmonic content and the distortion changes as you change the soft knee. But this is it for the video. Soft tube clipper and widener. You saw them first here on Mixbus TV. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if you have questions. Links to the new plugins are gonna be in the info box down below. Check out the new website, mixbustv.com for all the mix and mastering courses and a lot more. Click the join button, become a Mixbus TV member, get mix consultations and access the exclusive videos here on YouTube. And if you like the video, please consider using the super thanks or grab some merch. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Stay safe. See you next time. Hands on my neck, hands get my throat, throat. Lift me up, up, man, take control. Oh.